Hello and welcome back to Saint Bernou. Today's episode is actually pretty similar to the previous one, at least the idea of it, as we're going to work in already existing neighborhoods and fill in a whole bunch of empty gaps we left behind while we were expanding the city. Not that we're going to add another 30,000 trees, maybe in some future episode, but definitely not today. I started off by placing down another metro station on that uh, line we have been working on in the last couple of episodes. It's basically between the train main station and that station in that new neighborhood we did in episode 14. Uh, from there I moved uh, to the tunnel which basically bypasses the train main station as we have a general traffic ban in that area and with this tunnel cars can basically drive between Lafayette and Barlow without entering a uh, set neighborhood. And as with the entrance on the other side, um, the, first part, um, the first part of it is actually a sunken road until it connects with the actual tunnel segment right underneath this intersection. And I used a whole bunch of walls as well as this uh, parking lot road and that building in the upper corner uh, to basically hide the ugliness that got created by uh, pushing the road down and I'm using that building in particular because it's one of the few buildings I have which are not terrain conforming. What that basically means is that when you raise the building up it doesn't have this concrete extension to the ground of it which uh, in turn pulls up the terrain all around it if the building is uh, risen up. Which in my opinion makes it a perfect candidate or to put basically on top of a tunnel, right? Um, now we are back at... Uh, where we plopped down the metro station in the beginning of the episode and I added in a whole bunch of buildings off camera and it was a long way until I was able or until I finally uh, decided to keep those buildings. I kept changing my mind and with that changing the buildings over and over and over again. It was, it was as I said, a long way until we got here. <laughs> And for the gaps between the buildings, I just quickly added a pedestrian path and uh, some stairs just to connect better between the metro station on the one side and the tram tracks on the other side. Well, for people with reduced mobility, I think they can take the longer route uh, around it. And while I was here, I quickly redraw the metro tunnel which runs through this area. And while I was doing that, I actually noticed that um, my underground metro network doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now, so I probably have to come back at some point in the future and uh, rework it. And while I'm doing that, I also have to rework some of the tram tracks as well. Um, I don't know exactly when I'm going to do that, but I hope rather sooner than later. And here we are finally working on that triangle uh, I left empty in episode 14 um, because I really didn't know what to do with it. I thought about maybe doing a park out of it, but then again a park didn't really feel fitting for this area. So yeah, now it's uh, turned into a public housing block. I think it's the first public housing block we have in the city. I'm not sure if we have one in Chateau I honestly can't remember. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely not the last one and as we will keep expanding the city, we will keep uh, adding more public housing blocks um, all around it, basically. And uh, step by step, by using walls and props and a pedestrian path, uh, surfaces, all that good stuff, I was able to turn this uh, into a little bit more presentable uh, corner of the map, I would say. I mean, they even got their own underground parking garage. Uh, I know in a lot of cities public housing is actually pretty pretty bad uh, because it's like very badly maintained and it doesn't get enough uh, financial support <laughs> so that they could maintain it a little bit better and uh, they are most of the time crime hotspots, but uh, there are a few expect exceptions. Oh man, I can't even English today. It's like maybe the third time I'm trying to do this recording, it's driving me insane. Um, yeah, there are a few exceptions, like Vienna for example, and um, who does a really good, good, good job uh, on their public housing uh, side of things. Um, I don't really remember what they do different, um, but I will look it up and when we work uh, on public housing in the city again we will I will I will uh, let you know what I found out and uh, yeah for this mini triangle uh, in the big triangle uh, I decided to turn it into a food slash kiosk uh, corner 
I thought we would have enough uh, foot traffic here because of the of the metro stop, uh, yeah, right in front of it. And I used the vanilla, the old vanilla underground metro stop for this. And yeah, uh, the, my idea was basically because it was the smallest footprint uh, station I had at that time. Oh, uh, yeah, but um, I think I will exchange it for class uh, BM net, uh, BM metro network. Um, once I come back to this area, uh, because they just uh, they just look better, even if they are a little bit bigger um, than the vanilla uh, metro station. And here I was actually working on a on a custom crossing, and uh, I wanted to do something different than just uh, a traditional zebra crossing. So I came up with this design, and I continued detailing in this neighborhood. And uh, yeah, while I was doing that, I also came up with a story. Uh, for this neighborhood, so back, 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 back in the days, maybe the 40s, the 50s. I mean, homosexuality wasn't wasn't something that was accepted in the city. Logically, I mean, they were also very close to the church and stuff like that, which in turn pretty much uh, influenced uh, or had an influence on the on the city's climate towards homosexuality. I would say, um, and yeah, they were. Uh, as gay people weren't really respected in the society, th this was more or less the only corner where they could live because you know, it was very industrialized and uh, nobody actually wanted to live here. And yeah, that was. Yeah, they basically got uh, <laughs> uh, resettled. Not really like resettled, forced resettled, but yeah. If you if you can't find any any other home in the city other than here, well, yeah, what will you do? But uh, yeah, as the city, as the city, as the times changed and the city got more modern, and especially after the 2000s when they turned that all the cargo rail into a light rail system, this whole area got uh, gentrified and reworked. And uh, yeah, today it's basically very internationally, and uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm getting a little bit off topic, I guess. But yeah, I might come back at some point in the future and add a few more hints here and there to to hint to the yeah basically gay history of this area and i don't know <laughs> um i hope i i didn't offend anybody um but i thought it's like a very nice aspect a historical aspect of the city um to have and uh, to add and yeah this clip here um i i really wanted to to include it into the video because um yeah it shows you basically how steep the elevation of this uh, of the light rail uh, system is there and on the whole line until now it's somewhere around four and five percent which is actually pretty good for a light rail system it's not too steep and i will try to stay inside those tolerances as we uh, move up uh, as we move up further the mountain or something like that and I also did uh, a whole bunch of intersection marking work in this episode, I think something about five or six hours. Um, so the whole of Chateaulin is basically marked, uh, Lafayette is to <laughs> finished, the old town is finished. Uh, basically all the parts of the city which are detailed and finished the road markings in those areas are also done. When I started doing the road markings I never thought I would come to this point, but yay, I did. Uh, it's actually a very good feeling. <laughs> and yeah, here I actually decided to try something different. Um, um, I put those uh, shop fronts into the wall. I don't know, I wanted to, yeah. I'm actually, what should I say? I don't really love it, but I also don't, don't, don't really hate it. Um, um, I have very mixed feelings uh, towards it. Um, Tell me what you think about it in the comments. I, I really can make up my mind if I will keep it or remove it. Maybe you can give me some advice. Um, I don't know. Uh, that, gre that Green Gaming uh, did, a, did a tutorial on how to do something like this in a proper way uh, by using PO. I will link it in the upper corner if you are interested in that. I can uh, just uh, recommend that. But as yeah, Sam Saint Bernard says no to PO, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I'm so lost today. Uh, also off camera, I did a whole bunch of work in Lafayette itself. So we had a few buildings which um, uh, didn't look too good because of the height differences all around them. So I added uh, a few terraces to them using walls and surfaces. It was nothing too interesting, so uh, I did it off camera. 
And we are finally, finally moving to the hospital, the main build of today's episode, let's say it like that. And yeah, basically starting by massaging the roads in front of the hospital a little bit. Again, we have height differences everywhere in every direction. Ah, this whole s oh sorry, I hit my mic. <laughs> this whole city is like a big height difference. Uh, it, it, it's nice to look at, but it's like really hard to work around it sometimes. And here I'm using those uh, fake keys, I would say. I mean, they look like keys, but they aren't keys. Uh, I have subscribed to them a long, long time ago, but uh, for some reason I never used them until now. Um, a very versatile asset. Um, um, yeah, I already used it uh, in the next episode as well. And yeah, my idea, or in a moment you, you're going to see, you're going to see me adding a sky bridge between the hospital and some office buildings behind the hospital. And my idea for that was basically that those office buildings are not office buildings, but more like uh, small doctor clinics. Like maybe you have a specialized uh, dentist clinic there, and then you have a specialized eye clinic there, a skin clinic. I don't know. It's uh, something I noticed in my city, but also while I was on Google Earth, I noticed it uh, a lot in other cities that uh, close to hospitals you always have like a whole bunch of private uh, doctors and their mini clinics. Um, yeah, so I decided to add it in Saint Bernard as well. And uh, yeah, here I'm working on a parking garage for the hospital as we yet didn't have one. And um, yeah, it's more to the back of it. It's not too welcoming uh, or too encouraging to, to, <laughs> to come with the car, but we will have like a drop off zone in front of the hospital. But from another perspective, I mean, the hospital is pretty good connected to the public, uh, to the public uh, transit system. It's good connected to the bicycle network. I mean, I think I think when when this whole area is like finally done, uh, the hospital will be at basically is the second or third largest uh, transport hub in the city. So yeah. Also, my idea for this whole hospital I totally forgot to talk about that is like basically grew over time. So this brick building is, was basically the first part of the hospital. It maybe got built in the 1850s. 1860s, uh, something like that. But uh, yeah, as time progressed, the hospital quickly started to, to, to be a little bit too small. So in the late 50s, early 60s, they expanded it and voila, uh, suddenly there was this, <laughs> this uh, concrete monstrosity behind that wonderful br brick building. But it wasn't the last expansion the hospital saw over time. A lot of uh, mini expansions to the left and to the back of it uh, also got added. Um, so to achieve this look, I basically combined uh, the hospital, a police station from the steam workshop, uh, the green cities, uh, DLC elementary school and a crematorium. Just like, yeah, to somehow be able to sell that idea without uh, telling you that, uh, that thing. I hope I succeeded in that. Um, I think you will get a better look on that in the cinematics. Um, you can tell me your opinion if, if, if you like it or not. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with it. I'm actually really happy with it. Uh, it absolutely turned out as I imagined it. Um, yeah, and here we are like working on that drop off area I mentioned before. Um, nothing too special. Uh, we have also have like a little taxi stand uh, to the back of it. And um, yeah, adding adding the last uh, details around the hospital. Um, yeah, some some ambulances here and there. Also, one I'm going to add one in this tunnel, <laughs> just to hide the fact that uh, this tunnel goes into a wall basically. Uh, so the emergency room of this hospital is actually in the basement of that building. Um, a little bit unusual, but uh, not too unusual. Two hospitals in my city have their emergency rooms in the basement. Um, I mean, where will you expand when you don't have any space left uh, on the ground other than to go underground, right? Um, yeah, and finally we are at the last clip of today's episode. Um, it's actually very funny because uh, <laughs> it's like 40 minutes compressed into less than two minutes. And uh, yeah, it just shows you how much work goes into, into detailing and working uh, in this city. 
I mean, even after those 40 minutes, I wasn't really done with this trip and I had to give it another 15, 20 minutes. I really didn't stop my time. <laughs> um, yeah, just to give it like the final touches and correct some mistakes here and there. And uh, yeah, it's like really, really crazy sometimes. But what should I say? I enjoy playing this game. I enjoy doing these uh, videos for you. I hope you enjoy watching them. <laughs> um, yeah. So also the cinematics today are a little bit longer and you, you will probably notice that in the before and after there's an empty gap which stays empty. I actually wanted to also do uh, the rail yard in this episode but uh, I run out of time. It, like really, it doesn't look like I did a lot but man it was. It was really, really, really a lot of work this episode. Um, yeah. Anyways, anyways, we are we are getting pretty close to the end, I would say. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, I gave my best not to just brabble around some crazy gibberish stuff. If you did, consider giving this video a like. If you did not, give it a dislike. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all I have for you today. Um, go and enjoy the cinematics. I will see you again in three weeks. A little hint, we are going to expand over the creek, a uh, really big expansion. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next one. Until then, have a good time. <laughs>